Hello everybody and welcome back to Stern Home Reviews. I'm so humbled by the positive reactions the channel have been receiving. Over a short period of time, the channel has gained more than 500 subscribers. Just imagine. To keep the almighty YouTube algorithm at work doing its thing, please remember to tap, tap, tap and subscribe if you like the channel. Today, I'm reviewing the Cambridge Evo 150 streaming amplifier. I pushed up the review of this as it's a direct competitor to the Linkdorf TDI 1120 and therefore it would be really interesting to see how it stacks up as this type of smart fi it definitely is the future of hi-fi for the masses. British company Cambridge Audio would be well known by most with a hi-fi interest as the company dates back as far as 1968. They have been producing almost every product category and has always been one of those hi-fi companies that slowly but surely adapts with the times. That's the reason why they're still here, I guess. Among their many achievements, the CD1 back in the 80s was one of the first true high-end audiophile CD players. It was a three-piece if customers had also ordered the quality insurance module. Today, Cambridge Audio has a tight selection of electronics ranging from the economical AX series to the high-end Edge series named after one of the founders back in the day, Mr. Gordon Edge. The new Evo series is a glimpse of the future for Cambridge Audio. Here comes a radical new streaming amplifier that looks like a piece of fresh thinking. I would even dare to call it innovative, stylish and attractive. From the moment you open the exclusive packaging, you are greeted with some emotional substance with the printed text for people who listen on the packaging, turning up the expectations for the musical capabilities and notch further. What Cambridge seems to be doing here is marrying everything the modern hipster could possibly want in a hi-fi audio device, including the ability to change the side panels in a snap. By combining high-end connectivity with great software that supports all the major streaming platforms, internet radio streams, playback of high-definition audio in all the formats you could possibly want, locally or over the network, we end up with a highly attractive product that is neatly designed for modern decoration. The Evo 150 even has a phono stage to support turntables, HDMI to connect to your TV and packs an amazing amplifier punch with its 150 watts per channel into 8 ohms and probably twice that into 4 ohms. That is around the levels of the Technics R1000 amplifier I previously tested here on the channel. Thus, this thing should be able to connect to absolutely everything including balanced equipment and drive even less sensitive speakers with headroom to spare. The Evo comes in two flavors for those who don't need 150 watts and the extended connectivity with balanced inputs, phono input, an extra set of speaker outputs, serial control, in-out triggers and more. There's the cut to the bone a 2000 euro Evo 75. The Evo 150 to me looks like a real bargain, given the fountain of extra connectivity and power specs. Choose the 150 if you need the extra connectivity, system integration, and or need the extra power. Both models has a single subwoofer output and a pre-amplifier output. This will allow you to upgrade or experiment with other amplifiers uh, if you want. For example, if for this review, I tested the pre-outs using these amazing New Prime Evolution 1 monoblock amplifiers. It gives the Evo a certain flexibility. The subwoofer output is unmanaged. Currently, there's no way of adding filters, work with timing or crossover like on the Linkdorf 1120. It looks like Cambridge uh, Audio counts on most customers to use less sophisticated speaker setups with the Evo. 
On the plus side, the EVO 150 has two sets of speaker output, so it can be used to drive an extra set of speakers in the kitchen, outside the house or similar. Just keep in mind that volume is adjusted for both sets of speaker terminals, uh, uh, meaning that you could not consider it a multi-zone style solution. Or how about just two sets of speakers in your main living room? Honey? Just look at it. My wife's first reaction was, wow. She found the Evo very stylish and feeling well built. The screen is not a touchscreen, and thank you Lord for that. Touch displays are totally unnecessary in a product like this, where the tactile feel of buttons will be a much more satisfying experience. Besides, relying on touchscreens kind of make placement of the product in your decor much less flexible. The Evo is a very attractive looking piece of furniture and has clearly been designed with an emotional response in mind. I think of hi-fi products as emotional transfer devices that should bring us closer to the music by being something you want to touch and look at. The Evo really checks all those boxes for me. A neat innovation is the removable side panels that can be exchanged with side panels in black uh, if you don't like the wood. The sides are attached with ma magnets, so no tools or fiddling about is required to exchange them. Smart. The dual concentric dial to the right feels great to the touch and the inner ring selects source from the source list while the outer ring controls the volume. It's a lovely and simplistic design. To the left of the concentric knob, we have a row of buttons for turning it on and off, selecting speaker outputs, and more importantly, select next track when some crappy tune appears in your playlist. Next! All this can also be done from the comfort of your chair with the included very nice remote control that unfortunately is a RR type that has to be pointed at the amp. Everything you need in daily use is available directly from the front panel of the Evo, except one big thing, all your internet radio presets. More about that later. On the design note, I must also praise the beautiful graphics and color accuracy of the display. It is possible to run at a very high brightness, but since it looks like a backlit LED type display, the black background tends to look a little washed out in the brightest setting. For the same reason, I prefer to take the brightness a step down, resulting in a decent light and better contrast. Cambridge Audio also makes a matching slot-loading CD player transport that unfortunately was not available at the time of testing. The Evo is built on Cambridge Audio's uh, own software platform called Stream Magic that is said to be the result of 10 years of development. It was my first time testing the software, so I have a newbie user perspective and only my experience with other systems to judge from. Stream Magic supports all the major streaming methods, services and formats. And since the software is developed by Cambridge Audio themselves, it means that future services and formats possibly can be included as well. What that means is certainty that your Evo can do whatever you need it to when it comes to play music now and in the future. Sources you don't need can be disabled, resulting in a source list that does not have to be longer than necessary. Every input can be named so it's easy to navigate your sources. Personally, I enjoyed the ability to connect my Tax C60 CD player both as a transport with a digital connection to the Evo and with its very colorful FET and tube enabled DAC via the balanced XLR cables. That is something usually uh, only possible with high-end gear. I set it up with my Tidal account and Spotify Connect with ease. I also use Rune, I play vinyls, and I actually also use some of my home cinema uh, components as sources for the two-channel system. All that was easy to configure, and it was great to be able to connect it uh, all if needed uh, through all this connectivity. 
String Magic also connects you to media library servers like this Sony uh, Z1 player also acting like a DNLA server to the network. Or how about this Synology uh, NAS containing all my music and RIP CDs in high quality for convenient access everywhere. If you have music on a USB stick, those can also be played directly from the library interface in the app. I tested everything except Chromecast and the Streammatic platform handled it all really gracefully, besides a couple of title issues. In fact, Streammatic feels solid and pretty refined as it should after 10 years of development. Also, playback of DSD files in the highest resolutions uh, through the media player is handled with grace and sounds really good. Tricky changes in formats are also handled fine by the internal media player. So for format support and basic navigation, it's a big thumbs up to the Evo. But there's definitely room for improvement when it comes to internet radio. Now. When working with internet radio stations, things get a little less refined. By going to the radio tab in the app, we can browse and search for radio stations. Unfortunately, uh, Stream Magic uses a very simplistic browsing method that really doesn't lead to exciting discoveries. So unless you want just some local stations and the most uh, popular genres, you're kind of... <coughs> For example, I play uh, smoothjazz.com every day, but without a browsing mechanism, you would need to know exactly what you're looking for uh, in order to search for it. Let's try uh, to search for smooth jazz. Once the station you want is located, it can be added to the presets. Unfortunately, again, the service Cambridge uses uh, does not give you stream quality options, so I'm presented with the crappy 128 kilobit stream, even though smoothjazz.com offers 320k streams that sounds much better. Fortunately, Cambridge seems aware of that limitation and provides the possibility to enter a URL directly. So by going to the channel's website, browsing around, looking forever, I'll probably be able to find a higher quality stream and set that up as a preset. The first three presets can be accessed directly from the handy system remote, but to my big disappointment, there's no way of moving presets around in the Streammatic software. What? That's just plain stupid. Let's face it, many users would use the Evo for listening to radio on a daily basis. And here it seems like Cambridge is deliberately making that extra hard beyond any reason or logic. For more on this, see the feedback section of the video. Anyway, once you are set up, uh, the daily use with the physical remote is great. In fact, I found myself using the remote uh, most of the time and not the app as the app felt a little clumsy. Let me explain. The, the most important function volume is not always accessible in the app, which can be pretty stressful. Add to this that the app does not have the option to stay awake, meaning that your phone is not ready to control the Evo when you might need to skip a track or turn down the volume when the phone rings with your buddy Tim or somebody is at the door. But it will work for most and it's stable. In direct comparison with the Lingdorf I reviewed previously on the channel, much could be learned about a really accessible daily user interface. The Evo can be operated from the front panel via the Stream Magic app or via the included handy infrared remote. Once set up, the Evo 150 is a joy to use on a daily basis. It will start playing from your streaming app from standby in less than 5 seconds. I had a joy using the delicious economically shaped remote. I found myself enjoying not having to look at a screen, unlocking my phone to do simple things like adjusting the volume and skipping tracks and so on. Being such a looker, the Evo will 
definitely draw you to it and you will want to touch that nice concentric knob all the time, which is great as long as you're not trying to turn on an internet radio station other than the one you have been previously listening to. At first listen, the Evo 150 surprised me very positively with a, for the price range, musical and punchy sound on my SBR1 reference speakers that are pretty heavy to drive and probably not even close to the expected type of speaker to be used with the amp in this price range at all. But nevertheless, it's a pretty revealing and unforgiving speaker if someone slept during amp engineering class. The Evo demonstrated good control, great bass, and never sounded pushed too hard, even with seriously dynamic material. The SBR ones are great for stripping the Evo 150 of all its clothing and all the makeup, and it puts the musical performance under scrutiny. And here we still find a very decent sounding amplifier that will most certainly deliver with most speakers in its supposed uh, price class. In a direct comparison with the bass sound of the previously reviewed uh, 2000 euro uh, linked off 1120 streaming amp without any of its DSP wizardry engaged, I personally preferred the sound of the Evo 150. It has the reference speakers more under control, which can be heard especially in the space, rhythm and liveliness and bass. My foot simply taps more with the Evo 150. but when the Linkdorf rolls out the DSP wizardry, I'm presented with a slightly warmer, richer bass, more refined mid-range, and a generally more pleasing presentation in comparison, but still with the soundstage sounding deeper and more refined on the Evo. For vinyl lovers, the Evo 150 has a great phono stage built in that I found sounding surprisingly detailed and rather smooth with an impressive low level of noise with my Autophone 2M black cartridge playing the classic level 42 album running in the family sounding just great on vinyl. Both these amps sound a bit grainy and deliver way less microdynamics in direct comparison with much more expensive high-end amplifiers like the new Prime Evolution 1 monoblocks that are subject for another review. This is to be expected naturally. The Evo 150 really impresses with its power and for the money, it's a nicely neutral sounding and very musical amplifier. The Evo will challenge any traditional amplifier in its price range with a serious run for its money, while still bringing all the functionality that modern hi-fi customers actually want, moving out of the stone age space of the traditional integrated amplifier. There's no doubt that this kind of decor friendly hi-fi streaming amplifier is a product type that has come to stay. It's a brilliant idea that will suit many customers seeking better musical experiences in the home above any crappy Bluetooth speaker out there. In the space we have competition like the NAD M10 that I have reviewed for an online magazine previously. You can see the link in the description for a Google Translate version of that review. The NAD M10 is smaller has a big touch display and built-in direct room correction. But it's not sounding nearly as good and I found it to have some annoying gain structure problems in the way they handle room correction and tone control that would keep me from buying it. The real competition is the Linkdorf 1120 that costs the same as the Evo 75 and will offer some very refined functions when it comes to advanced speaker configurations as well as the onboard world-class room correction system, Room Perfect. So if correct sound in a less perfect sounding room and or if you want to uh, use very small speakers with subwoofers hidden in the room is your priority, there really is no alternative to the Linkdorf for the best results. To learn more about the Linkdorf 1120, be sure to check out my videos on that subject here on the channel. The 1120, on the other hand, does not give me the same emotional connection as the Evo and lacks features like DSD playback, Tidal Connect, 
a USB DAC and more. And then on the other side again, the 1120 is smaller and runs even cooler, meaning that it can be placed just everywhere and the app is cleaner and more satisfying in daily use. Choices, choices. What is right for you has to be a balancing of all those things. The best you can do as always is to try it out in your own setup and just listen. Any good reseller should give you that possibility. I think that Cambridge Audio has made quite a home run with the, this first attempt in the streaming amplifier category. The Evo 150 brings great value to the space with its attractive looks, great sound, solid, upgradable software platform, and yet aggressive price. The powerful and solid performance of the Evo 150 is really a testament to how far switching amplifier technology has come. The 150 model is unexpectedly versatile and easy to love. I enjoyed so much browsing through tons of playlists and just discovering new music. I think that this is probably one of the best streamers I have come across with the perfect mix of format and services supported in a friendly package that grows on you every day you use it. Aspects of the user interface still has room for improvement if one were to strive for perfection. Uh, but the good news is that all the criticisms I have given are things that are easily fixed via software updates. And since I would expect that the Streammatic platform is Cambridge uh, ticket to long-term survival, I would expect them to continue the amazing 10-year development streak and keep tightening the software experience and functionality further. It does not take away from an otherwise very positive first impression. Congratulations on the new baby Cambridge. It will most surely make lots of music loving fans out there. Thank you for watching. Tap, 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 subscribe, and remember to just listen. This is the new refined afterthought segment where I collect and present feedback to the manufacturer as my company helped developing ideas and marketing based on strong principles. In the segment, I go through box I found and provide suggestions for improvements. Comments are, are not in a prioritized order. Manufacturers are always welcome to contact me for clarifications or sessions. Find contact info in the channel description. For the review of this Evo 150, latest software using the early update function was used as per July uh, 2021. On the hardware side, I found three and a half issues. First, in the initial uh, setup, firmware updates were failing repeatedly. After turning the early update option on, I was finally able to firmware update the unit connected to LAN network. With that experience in mind, is a forced firmware update at startup uh, generally a good idea? The user will not be familiar with the product at that time and is probably fighting just to get it online. Firmware updates should be suggested after initial setup for the least amount of newbie user stress, or at least have the option to skip it. The USB input exhibited issues when used in Type 2 mode when switching between high-resolution DSD 
and PCM formats. When switching to PCM from DSD, the sound would appear to be distorted, like the DSD mode was hanging. I was not able to reproduce the issue with the same source using a Sennheiser HDV820 DAC with DSD support, even though this unit emitted a slight garbage click sound on the converter switch from DSD to PCM. The source used was a Sony uh, HAP set one es I was not able to make uh, the HDMI ARC function work with the LG CX series OLED TV at all, even though the EVO was detected using uh, the onboard guided setup in the TV and the SIM link was detected. Several methods of connecting uh, was tried uh, by the guided TV setup and one worked turning on the amp, but no volume control or transfer of sound was possible with this TV. I've seen similar issues and instability with other HDMI equipped amplifiers on these TVs though. I don't understand the choice of equipping the EVO with a mini jack headphone socket. Today most users in the segment will use wireless headphones and those who take their headphone sound seriously would most likely use headphones with a large jack. A larger female jack is more solid and it's easily converted to a smaller jack using widely available adapters. Adapters converting mini jack to a large jack, not so much, and prone to destroy the mini jack female socket over time. I think your choice of mini jack contradicts the essence of the product. Naturally, users could add a serious headphone amplifier via the pre-outs. But since no clean headphone preamp pre-out mode is provided, it's really not an option if speakers are connected to the system, since these currently can't be muted separately, but has to be disconnected when using pre-out. So it's not a practical uh, real solution. I also tested the Bluetooth output functionality with a pair of Sennheiser Momentum 2 headphones, but found especially the balanced line input sounding distorted uh, via the Bluetooth interface. It seems like there is an internal gain control issue before the Bluetooth transmitter. Much praise to the nice and highly attractive original remote control. It uses infrared, which in this day and age where users are not used to pointing at anything in order to make it work, seems a bit lazy. As it's more likely that the systems are placed according to decor more than line of sight for the remote. Competition offers RF for Bluetooth remotes or even makes it a user choice for the very same reasons. The feeling that something just works and the feeling of empowerment is what makes uh, users love a product in the long term. Now imagine mom in the kitchen with your remote and the system placed somewhere in the living room and you know what to do with the next products. The rest of my comments and suggestions are all about the software user experience. Using the early release of July 21, I found issues with the stability of Tidal. When playback using Tidal Connect was started and the iOS phone goes dark to preserve battery life, upon return to the Stream Magic app, or Tidal for that matter, the connection is simply broken. Music is playing, but it's not possible to skip or initiate playback of another track. The same behavior I noticed when, for example, going from title playback to recalling a preset and then try to return to try title playback. With Rune and Spotify, everything works as expected and very nicely, no matter the condition or change both ways. One of the most user-empowering features of the Evo, in my view, is the ability to assign presets for favorite radio stations and Spotify content. This seems to have been made unnecessarily hard for the user, though. It is simply the opposite of empowering the user and seemed unfinished to me. While it's easy to attach a radio station to a preset, it is very cumbersome to move them around. The interface would be much more delightful to use if presets uh, could simply be dragged in the desired sequence in edit mode. Also, it uh, would be useful to be reminded here that the three top presets are directly assigned to the remote 1, 2, 3 buttons. I also find it illogical that 
presets are not available in the sources list. Radio is an everyday thing for many people. Uh, not being able to turn it on in the morning directly on the attractive unit itself is simply a do-over in my view. Making presets a uh, part of the source list will empower users in the daily use of the product. Another thing to make sure of is that custom names can be applied to presets, so meaningful names can be used if wanted, just like with sources. Imagine then that sources and presets could be arranged in the exact sequence the user wanted, thus refining the user experience to only the needed sources and radio stations, and preferably uh, playlist recalls the user would want. This is key for selling this type of product to people with special needs uh, or for commercial installations. The concentric dial could be the only thing needed to empower these people to enjoy a totally customized user experience according to their needs, simply based on being able to customize what today is the source list only. Now imagine that the user could make voice selections using the custom preset names using Siri or Google. To me, the list-based approach is the key for this. The Stream Magic app's biggest flaw to me is the hidden volume control. Such an important control should be visible at all times in the app, preferably with the option to mute it as well. Also, it seems odd that sources are presented as icons with truncated text, while everywhere else using the remote or directly on the unit, we are using a scrolling list. This is inconsistent and actually harder to overview if users are using multiple sources. It makes the app feel a bit clumsy and busy to me in daily use. The recent station pane seems totally unnecessary as preferred radio stations should be attached to presets. Also, the music apps pane should only be populated with the user's selected services from the preference setting to provide the user with a clearer interface. The sources presented with icons takes up far too much space, thus stealing real estate from the good idea of the interface, namely the easy to access single press presets that could easily take on the job of being direct access source selections as well. Most smartphones constantly turn off the display after a short time, meaning that the usefulness of an app remote uh, becomes very limited and distracting as the user has to constantly log in and wait for reconnection before being able to use the app remote. This can be solved by making an option uh, for the app to stay awake, maybe even with an auto uh, off function when the phone reaches, for example, 20% battery. This way, the user can focus on enjoying and browsing music and get a more functional remote using a phone. In the absence of uh, any room correction or advanced filters, a more refined tone control could really be beneficial. Two bands, uh, bass and treble, are okay, but uh, how about making the two filters full spectrum frequency sweepable with a adjustable cue, so users can set the target frequency uh, according to their needs? Also, a selectable subsonic filter should be mandatory on a 300 watt amplifier with a phono stage. An unlocking feature hiding the advanced functionality until wanted by the user could still keep the interface simple and clean for the less advanced users. Lastly, exchangeable side panels. How about providing a clean printable version of the side panels as an optional purchase? Or maybe even consider building a service allowing users to order custom side panels with their own designs. For further ideas and comments, feel free to contact me and thank you for watching.